Amy Roseboro is here. She's a state archaeologist. And uh, welcome, Amy. Good to have you here. Oh, well, thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming in. So, uh, I, I was thinking what, what's the, going the Ra- on here? Raiders of the Lost Ark would have been a great uh, a theme. <laughs> theme oh. Some music to oh, play. Oh, you're right. I yeah. should have pulled it up. Wow, we can still Darn. look for it. All right. Oh. Amy, uh, welcome once again. Uh, we want to talk about some of these discoveries that have been made recently in Lake Mendota. They keep finding these canoes, right? Yeah, canoes everywhere. How many canoes have they found so far? Uh, up to around 10 right now. Yeah. And have you been actually involved in these searches yourself? Or are you just, uh, are you part of the committee or something that, the, the canoe committee? Uh, well, I'm, I'm the land-based uh, partner in this. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a team of divers that work with the Wisconsin Historical Society. Usually they're working on shipwrecks out oh. in the Great Lakes. Yeah. And Tamara Thompson, uh, one of our divers, just happened to be kind of swimming around in the lake one day. I looked down and was hovering right over the end of a canoe. Wow! And so that's what got us all started. It's one hundred percent chance. And when yeah. did when did that? How long ago was that? That was about three years ago. Okay. So when they find these, then what's the next step? When, so he just saw something, mm-hmm. and then what? Uh, first step was to get a radiocarbon date because we're not sure. Okay, is this a, something that's hundred years old? And and we thought if we were really really lucky, that date might be three hundred years old. And mm. instead, it came out at 1,200 years old wow. and blew us away a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. And then it turned into, well, we've got this ancient canoe. It's exposed. It might be starting to degrade. Why don't we re-raise it up? And so it was brought out of the water and taken to our conservation facility downtown. And the, the goal was to, to get it stabilized. Because yeah. Wood that's that old, when it's brought out of the water, will fall into sawdust in short order if it's oh. not properly So how do you served. stabilize something like that? It, a chemical it. called... Peg or polyethylene glycol. It's a, a non-toxic wax. If you've ever eaten a skittle, you have eaten yes. peg. Yeah, so they're awful. Uh, <laughs> it it turned out to be a major component in vaccines. And if you think about what was happening three years ago, you mm-hmm. realize that we, yeah. we had a little supply issue with that. Uh, but it came in uh, just a few months ago, actually. So they're they're now being conserved. So we kept it in water until then to keep it preserved. Mm-hmm. And right. we thought, all right, that's it. You know, one canoe. Yeah. That's, Should be happy with yeah, that. Yeah, we'll never That's be a... that lucky again. And right. then, then the following summer, Tammy's out messing around in the lake again. <laughs> oh, Tammy. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Can't uh, stop her. Text message comes through and says, guess what? I just found another one. And same process. With, well, yeah. this one will be about the same age as the first one. No. Number two was 3,000 years old. <gasps> wow. And okay. That's ridiculous. The then... earth wasn't even around then. Uh, First one was 1,200. 1,200, yep. Second one, 3,000. Christian nationalists are listening to this and they're freaking out. (laughs) Okay. And And, then what happened? And then, well, we, (laughs) when we were excavating uh, the second one, Mm -hmm. the divers down there kind of brushing set them away because, again, the thought was, well, is it the oldest one ever found in the Great Lakes? We obviously have to raise this one up and make sure it's conserved. Uh, When they were doing that, they started noticing other wood down there. And that got us thinking about some pieces we had brought up with the first one that we thought had fallen off the degraded end and mm-hmm. you know, like maybe we should check those out just a little bit more and so we got more samples did more radiocarbon dating and suddenly we didn't have two canoes we had 10. wow and so some of them are still in fragments on the lake bottom some of them are fragments that we brought up thinking that they were belonging to canoe number one or canoe number two and the oldest of uh the dates came out at just over four thousand five hundred years old that's amazing Oh, that's a, the beginning of time, according to the Bible. <laughs> uh, now, here, here, here's the, here's the thing. I want to know where where are they located? Is it near the shore? Were they stored on the shore and ended up, you know, being lost in the water sometime? What or the lakes raised up? What happened? How did they get to where they were? Uh, well, exactly right. They were being stored on the shore. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the little trick here is that the shore was not where the shore is today. So at the point that these canoes were being put in place, the shore was much, much lower, uh, further out. So you have to go a couple hundred feet out. So if anybody's fished on Lake Mendota, they talk about the wall. So there's a drop-off where all the fish hang out. And okay. that's an ancient shoreline. Oh. So people were probably putting the canoes in the water over winter to keep them from freezing and cracking and, and destroying themselves. Mm-hmm. So they'd cache them deliberately. And then over time, you know, one canoe gets left behind, then another, then another, then another. Oh. And they're all kind of building up on one little stretch of the lake shore. I see. Uh, talking with Amy Roseboro. She's a state archaeologist. So when they find these canoes, well, what kind of wood are they using? 
Is that, can you tell that? That's local good wood. Local wood, and that's one of the things that actually has us the most excited, is because you can see the environmental history of Madison mm-hmm. through the canoes. The oldest ones are elm, mm-hmm. which is very very difficult wood to work, but it's the tree you would go for if the environment is very open, if you had an oak savanna environment, because elm will grow very straight okay. in those right. conditions, and then you've got a nice long segment of trunk to make a canoe, and then it switches to cottonwood and ash. And then over to oak, first white oak, and then red oak. So what you're seeing is the prairie and savanna giving way to a more closed canopy environment around the lake. Mm, and that matches pollen that had been pulled out of the lake by the university hmm. uh, years ago. So we're seeing... They pulled pollen out of the lake? Yes. That little sediment cores, and then somebody has to go through all that yes. mud and tease yes. out the pollen grains. It's, it's a job, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's Not a pretty got one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going through mud. So you have these 10 canoes now. Right? Mm-hmm. What happens, uh, where are they now, and what's happening? Are they still researching these canoes and kind of um, still re- out? Yeah, okay. so uh, the ones that are, have been left on the lake bottom are going to stay there. Okay. I guess once you get to a certain age, the wood isn't even really wood anymore. Mm-hmm. We barely brought up that 3,000-year-old canoe. It, sh- it mm-hmm. fractured into about 30 pieces Wow! just from moving that short distance. And we'll be able to put it back. We've got a jigsaw puzzle box lid for that one. <laughs> so we'll get it back together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then so, will you put it on display some? The, yeah, the canoes that were raised, the goal is to put them in our brand new history center that's due to open, I believe, 2027 hmm. here. So where is that going to be? Right at the corner of the square where our museum is now. So across from uh, the Veterans Museum, right, right. Uh, right down State Street right. and the Capitol Square. All right. Okay. And it's going to be a spectacular facility. Yeah. yeah. So um, now the search continues for more. So you found 10. How many more could be there? You have no idea, really. I, you know, no. when I close my eyes, sometimes I think that what we may have is just a bathtub ring of canoes all around oh, Lake whole, Mendota. Oh, sure. And Monona and Wingra and Kiganza. And, you know, the indigenous presence in Wisconsin goes back you know, since time immemorial. You know, 14,000 years documented through uh. archaeology, most likely longer than that. So that's a lot of time to lose a lot of canoes in. So. <laughs> Is, isn't right. there you know, scientific equipment now that is capable of finding these shapes instead of actually visualizing them, seeing them, discovering them? It's like super scuba diving. underwater cameras. Yeah, and well, like and not, I don't know if it's so much that, or but it's some kind of radar device, some some way of yeah. mapping. We're, we're, we're checking that out right now, as a matter of fact. Oh. So uh, we, we attempted some ground penetrating radar on the lake ice winter before last. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a horribly, horribly cold day. Uh, just dragging this equipment back and forth, we had uh, William Quackenbush. He's the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Hodenhock Nation. Uh, Larry Plasinski, he's the equivalent position for Bad River Chippewa. We've been in contact with the Menominee. So we've got tribal partners that are coming down to lend their equipment and expertise. And we got some data out of it. We thought, mm-hmm. all right, we'll try it again last winter. No mm-hmm. ice. Right. At least nothing I wanted yeah. to walk on no. with, with expensive equipment. Mm. So uh, we are attempting a new technique. We'll be out there in September uh, with ground penetrating radar. We're going to put the... There you go, radar. Yeah, we're going to put the radar unit in a canoe mm-hmm. to find canoes. <laughs> An old canoe. Okay. <laughs> well, so Sam has a, a styrofoam sailboat that... <laughs> <laughs> He can help you out. I don't know if I would. We I don't may, know if I would trust him. that to have, have <laughs> thousands of dollars of equipment yeah. just sitting in. I mean, do they find out what other artifacts have they found besides canoes? I mean, uh, did they find anything else down the, there? The first one yeah. had a set of seven uh, stone net weights still inside it. What? What? Stone net weights. So they would be used to hold down the bottom of a gill net, okay. and then there would have been floats, so wood oh, okay. or gourd floats holding yeah. it up. So we interesting. We, pretty sure that was a fishing canoe because it had fishing gear in it huh. i was hoping for fish hooks didn't spot anything like that so well you know we've all seen the indiana jones movies are any of these booby trapped not so far <laughs> okay not so Great. far but Fantastic. you know we, we always keep that in mind <laughs> fascinating all right well thanks. um so as the search continues, how can people uh, find out more about these canoes? Do you have any information online about the search or how uh, this is going? Sure. You, if you just Google it, honestly, you're mm-hmm. going to come up with a billion uh, recorded videos and, and lectures that we've given on them. Well, so, Amy, yeah. thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. Amy Rosebro, state archaeologist. This is fascinating. Mm-hmm. And uh, good luck uh, with your continued search. Yes. Yeah. If you find a uh, you know Lake Mendota monster, let us know as well. We're Absolutely. very very interested. <laughs> You're in the that. first call. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you.